but I'm, the grandfather's quite ill. And um, they call him in the film that he's a strong man, but I'm wasting away. So the trick is to get clothes that are too big, get oversized shirts. And I remember when my grandfather was very ill and he had shirts with, he'd do the tie, but it would hang down here. And I remember that would lock the drawn in. I'm a wonderful makeup artist who makes me look quite ill. And I'm very robust, I'm very healthy, I hope. I think I am, and strong. So I wanted to do that. And so I, I, I'm now going to, I'm going to be 84, and then playing the scene yesterday in the Flushing Meadows. That, those days when you're going to say goodbye, and I remember that lost look in my own grandfather's face, like they're already leaving. And uh, it's very helpful. So I saw myself in the camera reflection. I thought, oh, God, I look like my own grandfather. <laughs> James's films are very special in that way. They're contained, they have a content of family and values and love and all the ups and downs of life, pain, suffering. And uh, I think they do connect with audiences. I think it's a tendency, I'll stick my neck out here, there's a tendency to be condescending towards. They, oh, they only want fast guns and all that stuff and speeding and big epic things, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But it's a change to do something. I just did one called The Father, which is very contained. It was a French film, really, but set in England with a brilliant director, Florian Zeller, and all set in one apartment, but a man with dementia. And what was remarkable about it was so easy to do. Uh, no great production designs. And uh, you get an excellent script like this is, then you're following a roadmap. You don't have to examine and analyze and wonder where I'm come from. <laughs> it's there in the script. So I don't waste my time doing it. I used to do a lot of that you know, method. And well, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I've, I've been doing it a long time now. So I know the sort of rules for myself. Learn the text, show up, relax, and let it happen. James, I noticed he says, I don't want the camera to move. Let's keep it here. And do it. And that creates that intimacy and lets the audience understand. Because if you're watching a camera moving all over the place, you think, who cares? Life's not like that. I want to thank the crew. The crew is the most important part. They put our faces up on the screen. And these guys work so hard. And as we know lately, you no know, sets are very dangerous, especially if you're working long hours. And these guys, um, women and men, are on their feet all day. You get tired at the end of the day, and that's, that's when... Uh, so, I, in my own way, I try to encourage you, know, don't, don't rush it. If I were a director or a producer, I'd say, stop running around, because that's when the accidents happen. People get tired, they fall or they bump into things and cause severe injuries. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, if I were a producer or a director, I'd address, I'd address that, you know, thank the crew, because they're the ones who do it. They really are. And I make sure I know as many as I can, you know. Because nobody wants to feel anonymous. People want to be recognized. You say, good morning, how are you? How are you doing? You? <laughs> you just make people feel alive, that they belong, that they're doing important work, and they are. It's more important carrying a camera and the grips and carrying all that equipment on the stairs to photograph my silly face. And that takes a lot of work. And I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, makeup and props and hairdressing and wardrobe and uh, the electricians, the camera, the sound. That's, uh, that's teamwork. And um, I never forget that. I was encouraged by that many years ago when I did my first film with Catherine Happen and Peter O'Toole. It was called Line of Winter. God, that's 1967. It was my first film and I remember Happen saying, I always remember how's Thumbing out to the crew. I always remember and appreciate the crew. And she was wonderful with them. Good morning, Lenny, she'd say to the electrician, how are you? You were out drinking last night. <laughs> she, no, she was, the crew loved her because, and Olivia was another one, Lawrence Olivia. Always knew all the crew's name. Now that's having your feet on the ground, I think. The United States stands for an idea whose time is now. I think I want to be an artist when I grow up. You're going to be an artist if you want to be. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to college. 80 years old, New York. 
親友との些細な悪さが大きな波乱を招く少年がこの国で生きていくための選択アルマゲドンタイムある日々の肖像。